hi everyone and welcome to the 25th Pan-European Conference. Uh, welcome once again our community, our colleagues who has joined in today. Um, it is the 21st of April. We are tuning in from Ljubljana, Slovenia. Uh, we are enjoying here in the full spring blossom and um, enjoying the reawakening of our surroundings. So we are happy to be again here with you. Thank you once again. Um, without further ado, I think we can start with our presentations. We have four presenters today. So before jumping straight into the presentation, I will now all invite them all to the studio so that they can say just a few quick words about themselves. So in order of today's presentation, we uh, first have Nada, and then we have Mirta, Lakramiara, and mm, then Svitlana. Okay, hello. hello. Um, okay, I think we can start with uh, Nada, if you want to say a few quick words about yourself. Uh, yes, uh, greetings from Croatia. I'm Professor Nada Radkovic, working in a high school, Sredna uh, Skola, Banja Osipjela Cicin, and also I'm an assistant professor and faculty of economics, business and tourism split. Uh, today, really happy to be here again, and I'm uh, sending hugs and love to all our participants today. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will go now to Svitlana. Hi, Svitlana. Okay, hi to everybody. So welcome and greetings from Ukraine, from Kharkiv. Uh, I'm the Associate Professor of the Kharkiv Karazin University, uh, working at the Department of English Philology and Linguistics. I was uh, sev not several, very many times uh, the participant of uh, the conference and I really appreciate that now I have an opportunity to be the presenter there. Okay, okay great. Uh, Mirta? Okay, hi everyone. This is my second time uh, holding presentation here. Uh, last time was wonderful experience and I hope today we are going to learn a lot from each other uh, as well. I've been teaching English for 23 years, almost 23 years in a vocational school in Slavonsky Broad, Croatia. This is secondary school of economics. Okay, and last but not least, Lakramiara. Hi. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Lakramiara Fira. I'm from Romania. I teach English uh, in a vocational high school in Hush, Romania. I've been uh, teaching since 2003 and uh, I don't see myself doing uh, anything else. And uh, I'm very proud that I am here today with you. Thank okay. You. So thank you everyone to these uh, short presentations. Uh, so just a few of uh, quick practical arrangements. Uh, for everyone who is following us and probably already know, of course, you will find the certificate of attendance in the comments. Uh, you can ask any question to the presenters. They will gladly answer your um, questions. Maybe you can add something or comment something. If you want to share with us, we will be most happy. And of course, all the presentations are also available in our pan-European conference Facebook group. If you are not a member, also more than welcome to join. Okay, if we are now ready, I think we can start. Yes, so our first presentation is from Nada Radkovic. So uh, Nada, I will now leave a word to you. Uh, we will share your presentation. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. You can start whenever you're ready. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, today, uh, my topic is modern approach to dig digitalization in education. So I will start with the shift, the one uh, hypothesis, the shift towards a digital modern world had a measurable impact on the inner workings of education and sustainability. First, we need to 
Think clearly and deep briefly every day. Take a three breaths to have a balance between your mind and body. Uh, in my presentation today, we have few uh, key terms. It is modern approach, uh, digitization, digitalization, because it is not the same term, digital transformation, digital education. And I will uh, go through this uh, uh, in my uh, presentation. So what is digitization? Uh, we want to make data, the data we have uh, in a process, in digital process. But digitalization uh, needs, uh, you need to have uh, already uh, business decisions and then you can embrace them in the technology. Transformation, we know that we all are transformated from a, a traditional school to, I can say, a digital school. And we need all digital education in all subjects uh, we have to uh, uh, teach our students. So technology can become the wings that will allow the educational world to fly further and faster than ever before it will be all of it. We are witnesses of that. We teachers today are witnessing the situation every day because technology is rapidly growing and something we learn today, uh, tomorrow is uh, already uh, past. Uh, so, a uh, little reminder, we all know what are 21st skills today, what are the hard skills, what are the soft skills, and what we need. So, if we are not a critical thinker, innovator, creator, how can we educate our students? And then, in all that, in all digitalization, we need to put to sustainability because not only the SDG for quality education, every child has a right uh, on the quality education. We need to make a correlation. We need to make a plan, action and reflection to all SDGs in our classroom if we talk also about digitalization. So what are the skills in 2022? Uh, data literacy, cloud computing, uh, collaborative negotiation, self-growth ability, proficiency, creativity, leadership, and we need to recognize the needs of employers. Uh, what it means, the needs of employers. Uh, as I, uh, I work in a vocational school, so if you don't uh, have practice, uh, the theory is not enough, especially in vocational schools. Uh, how can uh, our students be competitive uh, on, the, uh, on the trade if they don't have the skills? So blockchain, web development, cloud computing, big data, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, blockchain, and many, many other skills are need to learn in 2020. Too. So that are the big challenges, big advantages. Uh, in September, I already talked about the blockchain artificial intelligence. Uh, I will only say once again, today, uh, really, data science, machine learning, AI, blockchain uh, is something that we use every day in our classroom it is not uh, a new new thing but uh, uh, it is growing rapidly as i said at the beginning every day uh, blockchain uh, last time i didn't mention a blockchain so today i will say blockchain a modern approach in modern society why uh, because uh, Today, uh, if you want to check uh, your bank account, if you want to uh, make a bank transition, or, or not only in finance and economy, you need blockchain. So uh, I want to show here that uh, uh, here is one, uh, the biggest virtual uh, university, International Internship University has uh, courses of blockchain and basic, professional and advanced. So. Uh, if you are interested, today you really need this. You really need the courses for the blockchain and artificial intelligence. Uh, we are going through this digital transformation in education. What it means? Uh, it means improved accessibility and access. 
uh, everybody needs to have access to the uh, learning, uh, to the uh, digital materials, uh, to the internet. Personalized learning approaches. What it means today, uh, we can say that uh, uh, we grow, uh, especially after this situation with COVID. Uh, we made materials and really uh, children with special needs and gift students today can have uh, personalized learning materials. Uh, VR and AR, that is our reality. Cloud-based learning opportunities. Everything, every, everything is uh, storing in the cloud. Incorporating the Internet of Things. What is the Internet of the Things? I will show it a little later. Uh, security across digital devices, <clears throat> protecting. Uh, also, uh, we need to protect our data and take care about uh, uh, another data, teaching digital citizenship in big data. Big data are all around us today. Uh, <clears throat> improved accessibility and access. Uh, today, there is no limitation, no geographical uh, barriers. Uh, I said for everybody, we can make uh, learning materials, virtual reality. Uh, that is something uh, today really important. Uh, it is used. You can you can make uh, uh, a great lecture. Like example, you can use this. This is only one uh, digital tool I choose. Art step. Uh, you can make a story, exhibition, uh, a lecture. Uh, and it is really user friendly. Like example, <clears throat> uh, we are still in the month of the STEM. Uh, see this woman in science. Uh, you can make a great uh, exhibition uh, in uh, art steps or another digital tool and uh, show uh, show it like uh, uh, exhibitions. Why? Because today our students uh, learn the best on this way and also. Uh, if we make uh, infographics, because uh, uh, you can talk uh, two hours, three hours, and maybe your students will not understand you. But if you have an exhibition uh, with the steps uh, or infographics with the steps, uh, in few minutes, uh, the, the, <clears throat> the materials, the learning materials will be very clear to them. Uh, Cloud-based learning, uh, also today we can say uh, this uh, storaging, on, we, are, uh, we are in live and this will be uh, stored in the cloud. Uh, Internet of Things, <clears throat> that is if we talk, if we talk, uh, <clears throat> I apologize, <clears throat> if we talk about uh, uh, smart devices, we have, students have uh, smart devices and uh, this Internet of Things needs to be incorporated in the school environment. Uh, security through digital devices, <clears throat> teaching digital citizenship. I will show this through my example. Uh, this year uh, of e-twinning is a year of our future, beautiful, sustainable, uh, together. And here, uh, all I said before uh, is incorporated like uh, uh, like one example in one uh, project. Uh, digitalization, sustainable development, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and smart technologies. Uh, let's see, what is a sustainable school? Why sustainable school, school? And how can we be a sustainable school? These are topics that we made in this project. You can see what can we make to take care of yourself, of each other, and our environment. There are three stages through, uh, through them uh, the students are going. First, the vision, then the big plan, action plan. Uh, the third is implementation of your plan. It means if you want to be a sustainable school, it is a long-term project, but you can learn your students on this way. So let's see what's next. Each winning uh, project, our sustainable future, uh, five partners from different countries, from Spain, from Georgia, from Turkey, from Croatia, uh, Portugal are working on this. 
uh why because we want to show and we want to recognize and improve develop the digital skills the language skills sustainable awareness and etc our school need to be sustainable inclusive and beautiful uh some of the works and like international team we are creating 3d sustainable school as i said artificial intelligence all these are the examples of vr artificial intelligence and all uh, of this uh, uh, digitalization and modern approach a look here team one is making a school a garden what should we do for a sustainable garden Team two is building a school. You see, this is a call space digital tool. And really, it is not easy to work in this digital tool. But our students are, uh, are learning with us every, every day. Uh, another team is doing energy efficiency. You see the works of the students classroom design how classroom do they want to see transportation to school how did they want to go to school on which way they want to go to school uh working in classrooms making sketches drawings and getting us brilliant ideas there are sketches these are the photos how the students are drawing you know you don't need only a digital tool first you need to make a sketch a draw and then put it in the uh, digital tool and make a 3d uh, 3d uh, uh material uh action bound activities they are making mammoths and all these are the steps uh, to the sustainable school green club activities that we have a green club activities every country have their green club activities so uh the shift towards a digital modern world had a measurable impact on the inner workings of education and sustainability uh i proved that uh, through this work uh, through working with this uh, digital tools and uh, we are really planning to be a sustainable school uh and to disseminate our knowledge uh, and to continue working on this uh, with our students in our international teams tomorrow is a earth day i wish uh, everyone uh happy earth day uh keep doing uh keep doing a great uh, work for uh our planet for our world uh, for our earth with your students thank you thank you very much for your attention and let's learn and grow together Okay, thank you, Nada, very much. Uh, we do have one question uh, yes. and, of course, some comments as well. But I will start with the questions from Roberto Christian Pizan. He is asking, how do you propose to combine digitally, digital education to manage recycling and climate change? Uh, how digital education to uh, in in every in every project uh, uh, first uh, I I don't know uh, do he think uh, to do with the students in school all uh, our students uh, are working uh, on the recycling they have their plans uh, and then uh, there as I show uh, their plan uh, uh, they put uh, they use digital uh, mm -hmm. digital tool uh some kind of digital tools to explain uh what they uh, mean and how to make recycling uh we are not uh in school uh like uh, uh, uh my students are not uh, technical uh not students who are educating uh for the technicals so they cannot make a machine for recycling but uh, they can uh, get some ideas how to, uh, how to make uh, something uh, that uh, that that uh, for recycling uh, machines uh, uh, that is a higher process uh, for industrial schools so uh, i can say uh, 
uh, maybe uh, they can make a job. Uh, how to collect? Uh, first, first they need to take care about the environment. Uh, they need to collect. They need to protect. Uh, that is the first step. Uh, another step is making some kind uh, of machines uh, to uh, to do uh, the process. That is a production process for me. So. We cannot get the idea of some kind of machine. Uh, we have many machines so, which do that. But in our projects for our students uh, mm -hmm. and for our work, I think that uh, we have uh, many tools. We have many uh, digital tools who, who are giving us uh, a solution or uh, how to make that. Of course. Okay, uh, thank you. As you can see, there are many congratulations for your uh, wonderful uh, presentation. And also, I would mention just one more comment, uh, then if you want to add something. Valentina uh, Stratan said that education can benefit from opening up new ones tools, such as open education resources, and that pupils and students can gain more autonomy through online collaboration. Yes, yes, uh, yes, uh, recognition is uh, uh, internships, uh, uh, online collaboration, and I think that uh, we all, uh, we all professors are working on that way. Uh, we are making a collaboration uh, with students from other countries, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I can say uh, from all or all around the globe. So not only uh, we, we, we go from Europe to all around the globe. And, uh, in, and in any moment, we are ready for a cooperation. Okay. So thank you very much for your presentation. Sure. That is it for now. If there will be more questions, we still have time at the end. So yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay, so uh, now I welcome Svitlana Tarasova. Hi, Svitlana. Hi there. Yeah. Hi. Okay, I will, uh, this is your uh, presentation, maybe mm -hmm. we'll from the first. Okay, if you are ready, the stage is yours. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Okay, so uh, today I would like to speak about such a great topic as clean education that is in hybrid education. Why we are speaking about clean in hybrid education? Because, so, First of all, nowadays, our technologies and the, the work of digitalization is the thing that is making us teachers to change our approach to the education of children, uh, and not only children, but students also, as uh, in higher education too. Because we need to combine... Uh, so, just a second... Uh, we need to combine what uh, we have nowadays with technologies with what we had in learning the language. We need to incorporate it into what we have. So let us start. What is CLIL? Uh, according to the handbook, it is a loving educational approach to teaching and learning where subjects are taught through the medium of a non-native language. From the very uh, connotation of it and definition, we may see that CLIL combines active learning, active learning that is content driving and focuses, first of all, and mainly on two things, it's language and content. But except language and content, it also includes cultural scene because you know that language cannot be without culture and certainly it's cognition when we speak about some when we speak when we speak about some subjects we are cognizing it and we see what we have so we are combining our language application as if the topic that we are uh, disseminating and we are studying. Um, each of us, when we are speaking 
about language, we are not speaking uh, not only about English. It can be any language that uh, we are teaching to our students uh, just as a second language. Uh, so we always uh, try to understand how, for example, to learn, to study and to teach English for some special purposes. For example, the students come to us uh, and uh, he has this special purpose. Okay, I need to learn uh, only English for tourism. Is it possible? Is it possible to learn English only for tourism? Or is, on, is it possible to learn English just to become the con uh, business planner or content manager on SMM? Certainly not. Uh, but still, teachers are always having this question, what to give more? language, language structures or content. Clear education proposes us and clear methods, they are concentrated not on the language teaching, I mean not these uh, structures, uh, uh, syllable, uh, syllabus uh, is not just only about grammar, phonics, no, all that is included into the subject teaching. The main thing, the priority in planning all the materials of teaching, language teaching is into subjects. Language supports the material that we give. And students are the biggest acquisition and uh, uh, the main effective role they have in producing all that because student engagement is the product of their motivation and active learning. But as we know, we teachers are those who motivate our students. So how do we usually engage our students? Uh, usually teachers ask questions and students don't like it. Just asking questions like, "Do have you done your home task? Or read please this, 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 translate, and so on. No. Clear education uh, forgets about it. Clear education combines the other ways of engaging students into the live talk. Uh, all the things as content, communication, cognition, and culture are used so that the students, not we motivate our student to learn, but the student is motivated by us. It's motivated by the situation that he or she should uh, give. Uh, so it has basis uh, for learning. So he needs, he understands the need why he is learning and why he came there. Uh, so the aims of every lesson that the teacher should uh, follow is focusing on content vocabulary. For example, if we are speaking about the, as I said, tourism, certainly it should be something connected with tourism. Every lesson should include communication skills, but so some group scenes or uh, some uh, special technologies and methods, we will discuss them a bit later, just in several minutes. Uh, uh, but this should be not imaginary things, but situations that have been taken from life, real update situations, cognitive things. Not you provide the student with solutions, but the students give you variants using the language how to decide and to solve this or that situation. Uh, for example, managers, they are making in English their business plans. Uh, tourism workers, uh, they are studying English, uh, but uh, they, don't, they don't study like London is the capital of Great Britain. It's very important to uh, know, but they know it. They are studying. The, uh, they are studying English. Uh, for example, if we speak about English, from the position um, of of making tourism prospects, uh, for example. Uh, the next, and also they should know these cultural differences. 
So if they are applying the language to this or that practice, uh, they will be aware of what they are learning. Uh, so um, uh, now, uh, the other point we understood that uh, uh, what CLIL is for students. For students, it's engagement, but it's really challenging for teachers to make students uh, in, uh, to put to change the roles so that not the teacher is going to be the main person in the field, I may say, but uh, the students will be. Uh, the teacher uh, task is to um, find this key to the student to integrate content and language and to make his or her input into the discussion. Uh, so, uh, what are the ways? Basic ones can be, first of all, it's like modeling sentences, using target language that uh, we discussed, also uh, recasting the learners and correcting them, analyzing errors using English. Nevertheless, if we speak about really um, very low language, uh, low um, degrees or levels of English, so still an, uh, using English, for people to be in this atmosphere. And so that uh, diverse learners' needs uh, will be covered uh, with this accuracy and uh, their continuous growth. Uh, when student is on the arena and uh, he has this uh, um, first role, we may provide different ways how CLIL can be uh, implemented. Um, nowadays, CLIL education is uh, uh, really for expressing the students uh, to speak by themselves. And here I have collected various practices all around the world uh, where how CLIL is applied. Uh, nevertheless, that we don't forget about our textbooks, uh, but so, so some of the ways. Uh, for example, the first one can be language showers. It is uh, a so-called technique. Uh, it's for students, uh, um, for children even, from between 4 and 10 years old. Uh, it can be even uh, for some time during the day. <clears throat> uh, and it can be games, songs, different uh, realities, so that we make people make them repeat may mean some point out some songs so that they are pointing out and they teach this new vocabulary by uh, by pointing my mean and they are getting aware of what they see and uh, uh, also they have this topic uh, the next uh, can be some CLIL camps. CLIL camps are organized for students from one school mainly, but sometimes it can be from even different schools. They are subdivided into teams. They have some rules. For example, they need to use language uh, always uh, for speaking, dealing, um, just even Mm, just even usual second-hand tasks and uh, uh, certainly they are going to get this enjoyable experience and uh, uh, it will inspire them to apply this uh, language into real life also uh, the next thing is a lot of international projects uh, that can um, uh, can also create opportunities for contact and communication with other speakers of the CLIL language. Uh, a lot of uh, um, 
a lot of courses, a lot of uh, critical and creative projects like global ones. So that it's like evaluation skills are promoted. It, this project can be as student ones, as school ones. Also, total immersion programs, it's, they can start from the first years of schools. So for example, uh, the child lives in the full immersion language uh, for all the time. So from the very early age, he hears, uses gestures, repetition, uh, develops uh, his own mother language as well as the other language with the appreciation of its own culture and the culture related to the immersion language. So uh, this will just like the most important ones. Um, uh, still, there is a big thing to do in this field because uh, to be a cool teacher is not to be a usual teacher. There is some, I don't say it's talent, but you need to always remember about these strategies. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, nowadays we have this shortage of cool teachers. And uh, the second point that is lacking we is the shortage of materials because nowadays so we have the textbook but the textbook should be reinvested in the other way so that uh, the uh, so that students um, will have completely different perspective of what they see not like translation filling in the gaps but practical practical application of that and that is the scene that is the most important one, practical implication. Uh, I hope that all our actions and especially our teaching, teaching of our students are going to be practical ones and will motivate them to find more about the world. Uh, yeah, I hope that my presentation at least opened and covered some important questions to you and I will appreciate to answer them if you have uh, them. Okay, yeah, great. Thank you, Svetlana. Uh, we do have some comments uh, and maybe questions. Um, I think we can address them. Mm -hmm. So there are many congratulations, of course. Mm -hmm. um, there was like a question and an answer maybe to this, so I will read it uh, out loud. So uh, Valentina said, digital CLIL is therefore an educational approach and does not mean using a methodology for teaching a foreign language or a digital skills as a means of delivery. Is that correct? And then uh, we also have uh, Alice Popa, uh, who's saying clearly is for expressing the knowledge and motivate students to have courage and trust. Yes, uh, so you see participants uh, uh, just like in communication in the chat, uh, we have come up with, so the question came up with the answer. Mm -hmm. I may just approve it and say that, yeah, so uh, he, uh, here uh, we are speaking about the preference uh, mm -hmm. of a student, uh, as a preference of uh, making the uh, student the main agent on this stage and so that not teacher is going to say that you need to do it and so on but the student is mm -hmm. going to understand it by himself and uh, so while teaching he's going to be in this practical situation in real up-to-date situation so that when he's going to apply it at work uh, so he will he will have already this experience what to do okay and another comment uh elisabetta says in albania English teachers mostly tend to avoid CLIL classes, mm -hmm. despite the fact that they are crucial for foreign language learning. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so it will be interesting for me why they are really trying to avoid it, because uh, mm -hmm. so CLIL now is... Uh, uh, so uh, we have this shortage of CLIL teachers, really, and CLIL is this approach that is... Uh, um is uh, uh, not only developing but uh, mm -hmm. 
is on the point of uh, great need because uh, uh, if we are going to use CLIL methods, CLIL approach, uh, this is going to be a great opportunity to carry a lot of different mm -hmm. joint activities uh, uh, throughout the world, mm -hmm. not in, only in some schools or universities, but really to make it global. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That is thank it. You. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we will continue with our presentations. Next, I will invite uh, Mirta Koskolobaric. Hi, Hello. Mirta. Hello. Hi. Okay. Uh, okay. We have a presentation, an art lesson, English in breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll share my screen. Yes, please. Okay. okay. Is this okay now? Mm, just a second. Mm -hmm. Oh, with, okay. With an yes. art lesson? Yes, art lesson, yes. Okay, good. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone once again. I'm glad that Svetlana uh, had a topic that nicely uh, dovetails to mine, actually mine uh, dovetails to hers. And since we are in the uh, background room, I couldn't uh, ask a question, but then I would just make a short comment. Uh, about CLIL teachers. As you will see, this is partly, actually, uh, completely a CLIL lesson. Uh, for a long time, I was sure that being a CLIL teacher meant that you are a subject teacher who delivers uh, your content in a foreign language. However, I think that we all English teachers, and this is the view that has been also supported by many uh, colleagues, uh, we all English teachers are actually CLIL teachers because a lot of things that we deliver are actually subject areas that belong to different school subjects. For example, if you start from uh, sustainability, it also doesn't reflect only English language, but it's connected with the fields of biology, environmental protection and things like that. So uh, my, les my lesson, the one that I'm going to present to you today is also a clear lesson. Uh, and it's about art. As I said, I teach in a secondary school, which is vocational, which means that my students uh, actually don't have art. They used to have it in primary school in a form of visual arts, but they don't know much about it. Uh, since I would like them, as we all teachers uh, do, I would like my students to have uh, as wide general knowledge as possible. I also like them to learn a few things about art, but also to do it in a certain uh, way that engages them and encourages encourages them to communicate because CLIL also um, implies a communicative approach where students should be really able to communicate well regardless of some tiny uh, errors that they make in their speech. So uh, I've done this lesson several times but over the years I adapted it to uh, my students and when we transferred online uh, I also transferred this to uh, breakout rooms. So I would normally start the lesson with uh, two introductory questions. The first one would be how much do you know about about painters and paintings? Could you name at least three famous painters or their masterpieces? And usually students are able to name maybe one or two, but the third one uh, is a bit difficult. So uh, this uh, often turns into to um, sort of uh, classroom activity. Then the next uh, activity was designed actually to uh, provide them with some uh, vocabulary, with some knowledge. And I will just uh, switch to these quizzes as you will see. So there is a set of three quizzes that I created using uh, learning apps. So the first one is a very simple one, but it engages them. They would like to find out more about the painters and their masterpieces. And it's very simple. You click on uh, an icon and then you click on uh, another one and you're supposed to match the artist with a painting. So, for example, this is, this should be a match and so on. So there is a set of cards. Uh, it will be available to you so you can use it as a, a lesson. Maybe one more important thing that I forgot to mention is what you uh, what I will present to you today is designed, let's say, for at least a double period of English. It depends on the level of your students. You can stretch it into four lessons. So it depends on uh, on the type of students you have. 
Uh, the next activity would be famous painters and actually the fact file. So, for example, Michelangelo painted and students are supposed to uh, choose an answer. So, for example, if I choose the wrong one, St. Patrick's Cathedral, uh, and you click on check, you will see that this is the wrong answer. Then we talk about the Sistine Chapel and uh, once they share the story that I think uh, Justin Bieber didn't know what the Sistine Chapel was. So it was a very, I don't remember it anymore, but it does trigger some uh, other background knowledge that students have about art and similar topics. Uh, and the third one was uh, to introduce them into a uh, vocabulary that they will need to work on CLIL uh, topics. So this would be matching the tools with the names. So for example, if you click on uh, the audio file. Canvas. Canvas, they are supposed to match the, the icon, the picture with the sound and so on. So this was a sort of introductory activity, and then we moved on to another one. Now, the topic was actually Leonardo da Vinci, and I wanted them to tell me what I actually knew about him. So they uh, were asked to write down a few things that they already knew about him, and then we shared it as a class, uh, and it was sort of just an uh, introductory speaking activity. And then I switched to something that I really like to do a lot. And uh, I've covered many serious little topics using cartoons. I think that they are a very good starting point for uh, introduction into serious topics. So when you start with something as a video clip from a cartoon, students don't have a feeling that they are going to work on something that might be uh, difficult or challenging. They think it's going to be very easy. So it somehow makes this transition to a difficult topic much easier. And I will just tell you briefly what the, less, uh, what the cartoon is about. The dog is uh, Mr. Peabody. He's a scientist. He has adopted a boy. Uh, the boy met a girl at school and as you can imagine, uh, the hell broke loose. Um, the, the dog, Mr. Sherman, uh, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Peabody uh, invented a time machine and he uses this time machine to educate or homeschool the boy and they travel uh, through different uh, historical periods. Now, uh, in the following uh, task, students were shown a short video clip and they had three questions. The first one was, which of the things that we have mentioned about Leonardo da Vinci could you see in the video clip? So after the watching part, something about his life, paintings, inventions. Uh, the next question was about, have you found out anything new about him? And which tools used by artists could you recognize in the video clip? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time uh, for watching it, but maybe I can just let you uh, see what this is about because it will be connected to uh, the following uh, lessons. So this is already uh, here. Uh, let's see. Uh, they uh, In their uh, time machine, they go to Florence and they knock on the door uh, of the house that belongs to Leonardo da Vinci. No, 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 no. Stop until you smile. Leonardo, tell me one thing I have to smile about. The sunshine, the pasta, all the things that make Italy such a popular tourist destination. I have not seen any of them, Leonardo, because I'm sitting here all day on my own hands. And so on. So there discussion goes on. And then uh, let's go back to uh, the questions. So things that we have mentioned, they could see that he was a painter. Uh, they had already mentioned the Mona Lisa and we talked about it. Then uh, some new things about him. He talks about himself and he says, well, I'm a painter. I'm a, uh, I build things, I uh, paint uh, paintings, but I don't tell jokes. So you can find out something more about him. And also, for example, they could recognize uh, the easel or the stand where he uh, keeps the canvas while uh, painting. We checked the answers and moved on to the next topic. The question was why they thought that the scene with the Mona Lisa uh, painting was included in the cartoon. They knew that uh, the Mona Lisa was the, actually the most important painting or his masterpiece, but also one of the masterpieces of art uh, in general. And then I asked them uh, why they thought this is such an important painting. Of course, they didn't know. It. Some uh, student once mentioned, well, the picture, was, the painting was stolen. Uh, and this was a very good way to introduce use them into a new topic, which was done in breakout rooms. First, I did it as a, a group work activity in the normal traditional classroom setting. But since we were online, I randomly uh, uh, divided students into uh, breakout rooms. Uh, there, each breakout room had 
three uh, members. However, there were some classes that uh, didn't have the, the number that was that could be evenly divided by three. So in groups where maybe uh, there were some students who were not so good and some of those who were good, I gave them the same task. Uh, before dividing students into breakout rooms, this is important to notice, I always give them all the links uh, and all the materials that they will have so they can save them and use them when, once they go into breakout rooms so they don't waste time waiting for me to share it with them. Now, uh, this is what they were supposed to do. Uh, I created an interactive image in uh, Genially, and it contained uh, six questions. And all the questions were related to uh, something particular about the painting and also something about vocabulary, which is uh, reserved for art. So, for example, question number one was, the entire composition is harmonious. Leonardo used the golden ratio. So what is it? Student, students had to go uh, on Google and try to find the correct answers to all of these questions. Uh, then let's see some others. Uh, what's special about uh, her look? And a lot of uh, art uh, historians said when you uh, walk in front of the painting, you have a feeling that her gaze is following you. And then uh, the answers to some other questions, for example, this one was um, uh, how they, uh, so we can read the question, uh, the experts have found something in her eyes. Uh, under uh, special microscope, they saw that there were the initials of uh, Leonardo da Vinci, so it was also a uh, sort of a uh, very confusing and puzzling thing. Uh, also, the, the lips are look very soft. Uh, there is something special about the smile and so on. So the task was for students to work in groups and to write down their answers. They could write the answers in the chat in the breakout room or they could write it in their notebooks and send me the picture. Of course, the winners were uh, the group who uh, needed uh, the least time to finish the assignment and who provided all the correct answers. They were graded uh, with with excellent grades. So it was a very good and um, at first it might seem a sort of uh, easy activity, but uh, our students' digital skills are not always as well developed as we think. So finding something through the inter on the internet takes a lot of time and um, somehow they need to be trained to look for specific information, which was very good uh, about this one. Uh, then there was another video clip from uh, Mr. Sher uh, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, and it was related to some of the inventions. We also talked about some of uh, Leonardo's inventions. We will also have just a short time to uh, watch it, I hope. Yeah, okay, it will work. So in the beginning, you can already see a few. It's like a toy store. Look at the Okay, so here you can see, for example, an amplifier, which is one of the, the, the inventions students recognized immediately. Okay, so it uh, immediately made Leonardo uh, very dear to them because they, they could see that actually some of his inventions are in their everyday uh, usage. Uh, okay, and then uh, the final activity uh, that was also done in breakout rooms, also in groups of three, I... Uh, created new groups with uh, new uh, students uh, in them. And uh, what they were supposed to do was the following. So I asked them to read one text. So each member of the group would read one text. As you can see here, they are all available to you as well. And you've got the links uh, from the pages to the pages from which I downloaded them. So you can see that there's also some uh, room for practicing past tenses as well and so on. So once students read it, they were also given this mind map and they had to work together and uh, fill in the missing information. Also seemingly easy activity, but also they had to uh, look hard for the information. Uh, I uh, told them they could write the answers also in their notebooks or they could use the Canva template, the, the editable one, which I shared with them so it would be easier for them. So uh, the, the basic fact file covered the historical period where he was born, when he died, uh, his scientific work, also his artistic contributions, some artists that he knew, uh, some works of art and their peculiarities and so on and there were some other interesting facts so this was an activity that they enjoyed uh, they liked working together and it it was quite dynamic and also they helped each other so for example if there was someone who couldn't find the information and the other two students couldn't find it either then they just uh, took a short glance at other students texts to see if there is something that they could uh, do to fill in this mind map 
uh, also our students uh, have access to Canva for education, so it's easy to share uh, these templates uh, with them. And final activity was let's have some fun. So I told them they could choose any painting they wanted and somehow um, upgrade it. So they could make some changes, uh, whatever they wanted. And of course, it had to be polite and then just uh, explain what they did. So you can see here the baby looked like it needed some clothes and the mom needed eyebrows. So this is what they uh, did. Also, I like the one with scream. It looks better with hair. Okay, uh, then also uh, adding face masks. Uh, and of course, Mona Lisa has to have bigger lips in nowadays world and also a tattoo and some eyebrows and uh, she looks more like a woman according to my student. Uh, also Starry Night. And also I gave them uh, an exit card. They could also send the answers in the chat or uh, share just their comments. So listing three things they have learned about Leonardo da Vinci, two things you will remember about today's lesson and the funniest acti activity for you today. Uh, regardless of all the hard work I've put into this, the, the favorite activity was the one when they could uh, improve the, where they could improve the paintings. And also, if you have some students who are willing to do art projects, you can also ask them to talk about them using uh, this uh, image. And I downloaded it from uh, IELTS official Facebook page so they can talk about various techniques that, and tools they can use in producing uh, their works of art. Okay, so that's it. Hope you find it useful and that you'll be able to use at least certain parts of uh, this presentation. Thank you. Great. You any questions? Yes, thank you very much for uh, such rich presentations. I don't know if you saw it. I have put some comments on the screen that there are many congratulations for such an interesting uh, presentation. They loved the film that you've shown. Mm -hmm. There was a comment of uh, Luminita. She said that she uses Jamboard online questions mm -hmm. and answer mm -hmm. applications as well as word wall, ASK quiz and in students classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, there you can see here, uh, there are so many uh, actually very beautiful presentation. Um, Okay, we have uh, also one comment. I will just show it. Uh, multimedia is one of the most effective system in the visual teaching area. The technologies used have a substantial impact on the process of teaching, learning English as a second language. Yes. Especially uh, video clips, this makes students, uh, they, they make students remember things easily and somehow they always easily refer back to them. Oh, okay, we talked about this when we watched the video clip. So they, um, as I said, uh, I like these cartoons a lot. Uh, unfortunately, my kids don't go to cinema as much as they used to. So I'm sort of uh, out of touch with uh, the modern cartoons. But uh, uh, although a lot of teachers said, wow, you, you know, your students are too old for that. They're never too old for that. Okay, they yeah. always like, and then they asked me, okay, did you watch this one? It's a great one. And I can see that they still follow what happens. Mm -hmm. But also you can always use uh, an example or two. I've done a lot of clear lessons using these as introduction. So it, it works just great. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Another comment was software helps students practice and evaluate their pronunciation and correct English. Mm -hmm. So in a correct way. Um, and we have... Of course, very interesting and very useful presentation. So thank you once again. That will be it for now. We will uh, move to our last presentation. Okay, so uh, we have our fourth presentation. Uh, with us is Lacramio Arafira. I will invite... Hi. Hello, everybody. Hi. Okay, so we have safe environment with three R's, reducing, recycling, reusing waste. Uh, this is your presentation. If we go on the first slide. Okay, when you're ready. Thank you. Yes, I'm ready. Uh, I'm going to um, uh, present uh, the Erasmus project uh, that my school uh, coordinated. I saw in the comments, um, uh, Andrada said that it was um, uh, with us in our uh, e-twinning project. Uh, 
so safe environment with three R's was a tuning project uh, developed last year, but um, because um, it is an actual topic, we uh, transformed it in a, an Erasmus project. So safe environment with three R's, reducing recycling and reusing, uh, reusing waste uh, is an uh, is an tuning on uh, Erasmus project, and um, it uh, has um, an actual topic. Uh, why? Because um, it rem uh, reminds us that our planet and its ecosystems provide us with the conditions necessary for the maintenance of life. And we need to change the way we think, we act and engage in uh, shaping our future. Uh, environmental protection is uh, a universal issue. Uh, people give harm to the environment uh, without, uh, without thinking uh, about uh, the future. And if we, uh, if we don't... Um, uh, take care about uh, our uh, planet, uh, this is the problem. Uh, we start, uh, as I said, uh, from the twinning project, we transform it in an Erasmus, but we also uh, um, have uh, as a starting point the European Green, uh, Green Deal. Uh, what is uh, the European Green Deal? Is a response to climate and uh, environmental related challenges that is uh, this generation's defining task. It is a new growth strategy that uh, aims to transform the EU into a fair and prosperous uh, society with a modern, uh, resource efficient, and competitive economy where there uh, are no net emissions of green. Uh, house gases in uh, uh, 2050 and where economic growth is decoupled from uh, resource uh, use. The EU has the collective uh, ability to transform its economy and society to put it uh, on a more sustainable path. So we know um, as four schools involved in this project, the environment ambition of the Green Deal will not be achieved by Europe, Europe acting alone. So the drivers of climate change and biodiversity loss are global and are not limited by national borders. So um, we did um, this project uh, and it was approved and we have uh, four months uh, of activities. Uh, we are um, um, for uh, schools and uh, the purpose of the project is uh, on a grand scale uh, to educate European students of different countries in order from them to get the hands-on experience of the concept of three R's uh, in the frame, of course, of sustainable development goals. Um, the main objectives of the, our project is to provide participants awareness of the climate change and environmental challenges, of course, via education, lifelong learning, logical thinking, and youth, youth interaction. Of course, we need to develop uh, to them uh, scientific and technical knowledge and, of course, skills for uh, quality uh, ecological education, uh, all of them in sustainable uh, environment, environmental protection. Of course, um, uh, we want uh, to boost uh, students' personal development, critical thinking, creativity for nine languages and ICT skills, and of course, uh, interdisciplinary cooperation. And uh, because uh, we have uh, four mobilities during our project, uh, we want to cultivate communication skills as well as respect for the values and cultural characteristics of uh, other partners. And uh, uh, of course, to develop the ability to socialize through the fact that our students will live in families, in hosting families during visits uh, to partner uh, countries. Um, this is, uh, these are um, the schools involved in our project. Uh, Romania is uh, the coordinator. Uh, we have two schools from Turkey and one from, uh, from Latvia. Uh, during the project, we have four mobility, and each mobility has a team, uh, recycle, recycle, reusing, energy saving, and reducing. Um, 
the first uh, step of sustainability uh, is reducing. What we uh, want to do is to learn our students to go zero waste. Uh, they prepare uh, a policy about reducing waste for schools and for homes. And uh, this policy will be applied um, uh, and re, uh, to all the partner schools and report it monthly. So uh, the result is to better understand their influence on the environment. Also, uh, because we want to develop the ICT skills during the project, they learn how to calculate the, their carbon footprint. So uh, this is a great way to determine how they are impacting the environment. Also, because it's about uh, reducing, uh, we will organize a trip to minimize driving uh, uh, and doing walking, biking, and using public transport as much as uh, possible. Nine. Um, the second mobility uh, will be about uh, the reusing. Uh, reusing, what uh, we want to, to do is uh, to learn how to be eco-friendly, how to be, uh, how to reuse a different um, uh, different objects uh, that we've already have them. Uh, this uh, uh, reduces pollution and waste, making it more sustainable process. This mobility, in fact, aims uh, to teach responsibly, uh, responsible eco-friendly living and learn some uh, techniques of uh, reusing rubbish, making the students aware of sustainable economic eco-friendly growth, and of course, help them uh, become responsible citizens of today's Europe and uh, the world. So uh, the students will be more sensible and careful in the future and thus uh, will be able to decrease, decrease the problems of tomorrow thanks uh, to reusing. What we've already done during this pro uh, project, Erasmus project, uh, is recycling activities. We've already go to Turkey and uh, five days and uh, we, uh, our students create, uh, created digital posters with the slogans about recycling. Uh, and I'm going to uh, show you. You can see here uh, the posters made by our students with slogans about recycling. They uh, all learn how to use Canva.com. Uh, you can see here our students making recycling pins. So they have learned how from recycled materials you can do so many things. Making bird feeders. Uh, they were divided in uh, international mixed teams and uh, they worked together. They developed their uh, uh, English communication skills. Here you can see um, a newsletter about recycling and sa energy saving. We related, uh, we made... Um, um, a connection between recycling and energy energy saving. And they uh, def, uh, find so many new things about recycling and energy saving. They didn't know uh, uh, how recycling uh, can save energy and they learned during uh, this mobility. Uh, also, they uh, created a brochure and a campaign about recycling and serving energy, saving energy, of course, again, using a digital app. And um, our last uh, uh, mobility uh, has a STEAM energy saving. Uh, the students um, must learn about uh, uh, how, uh, what are uh, alternative energy sources and how they are produced. Um, uh, they um, will learn how their daily routines can save energy. They will do study visits to local facilities that are using um, uh, renewable uh, energies. Uh, also, uh, as in the previous the mobility, previous mobility, they will create a newsletter about uh, renewable energy. They will make a brochure and a campaign about uh, how to use uh, clean energy in schools, in homes, and communities. We want to uh, to do through this project. Um, to put our students, um, to give them the role uh, uh, as a teacher, uh, 
uh, as teachers to be involved in these activities, um, to manage uh, these activities in, in, uh, in order to learn more and to motivate them, of course. So um, why are these three R's so important? By practicing three R's, uh, our students, we, in fact, we reduce the pollution level caused by the decreased need to harvest new raw materials. We save energy, we save money, we help uh, um, sustain the environment for future generations. Um, we reduce the amount of waste uh, that uh, will need to be recycled or sent to landfills and incinerators. Uh, also, uh, during our project, we are uh, developed um, uh, an event. We are an official uh, partner organizer uh, in uh, EU Green Week 2022. So um, we have uh, a whole week with activities relating to reusing, uh, recycling, and um, reducing. And uh, here are involved uh, schools from uh, Turkey, Latvia, and Romania. And um, everything, uh, all the activities uh, that uh, we are doing uh, will be shared uh, on our uh, twin space, uh, on e-twinning, uh, on our uh, sites, and uh, of course, uh, on the European platform. Uh, here uh, is the end of my presentation. Uh, you can see we have, uh, you can follow us uh, on uh, our Facebook, uh, on our site, of course, and we, ha we also have a blog. Uh, this is my presentation. If you... Okay. okay. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Too. Um, Look, uh, there are many comments on the how interesting and useful it was and how uh, indeed it is very important to practice the three R's as you have named them. I will show you some comments. Um, and there are no questions for uh, at this moment. Uh, we do have uh, one comment. Okay. Uh, the waste production process cannot be completely yes. stopped, but each of us can have a positive impact if it brings individual change. Yes, this is one of our objectives, to start mm -hmm. from uh, individual for our students, and then they go home, they talk to their parents there with the community. Uh, we are here in a conference, so we spread our activities, and um, uh, that's why I'm here, um, to show what uh, we have done and what we will do, so um, it can be uh, uh, taken as uh, examples. Yes, uh, indeed, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, before we will conclude uh, this, uh, our um, Pan-European conference, I will also now invite uh, other teachers once again into the live stream because we have uh, another comment uh, so that uh, I would like for all of you to hear because it's intended for the teachers. Uh, it's from Mihai Nikolai who is following us. Uh, and he said, during hard times, people survived by being close to each other and share knowledge, love and care. We as teachers are the ones who kept the light on in the night during storms and set times. So this was a comment for uh, all of you. So congratulations for uh, your presentations. Um, okay, before uh, concluding, uh, would you like, would any of you like to add something or... Well, I have a question, if I may ask, yes. like Raviara, uh, yes. with the project about sustainability. Uh, do you think or do your students give you feedback on how actually their uh, habits regarding sorting waste and throwing away things have changed? Uh, yeah. The project is uh, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, right now uh, we are doing uh, research because tomorrow is um, uh, Earth Day, 
the mm -hmm. Earth Day, uh, and we study uh, how uh, we made uh, the students made a questionnaire uh, with the team. How eco friendly are you? And uh, mm -hmm. they are putting some question, ten questions, and uh, uh, we will do um, a, um, a study to see how eco friendly are are uh, Latvian people, Romanian. So they are uh, learning by doing, and they will do the survey, the statistics. Uh, so uh, right now we don't know for sure uh, if the habits are changed, but they will be. But the percentage I can't say. But as uh, someone said before, um, we can't uh, go to zero waste, but we can't reduce it. Yes. I'm asking you because uh, as all other teachers, we I have also covered a lot of lessons uh, on, on environmental protection of uh, sorting waste and so on and uh, the Pacific garbage patch and so on. And then once I start talking about uh, talking about it with my students and I asked, OK, now have you uh, done something to show that you have learned? No, not really. <laughs> and it was really demotivating for me. And I have a feeling yeah. that uh, there are a lot of young people around the world that really are passionate about it. And then sometimes, you know, you spend a lot of time, you talk about it, and then you don't really know how much impact it, it has. That's why I asked you. I hope that your project will probably change at least some of their habits. Yes, yes. I hope to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think habits, you know, sometimes are uh, difficult to change and it might take time and effort, but uh, we should uh, probably at least uh, try and um, though it can be demotivating, as you, Mirta, said. But persistence from our side is important, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, thank you to each one of you to your uh, for your presentations. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you also to uh, everyone who has been with us today. As I said in the beginning, the presentations are available in our group. We will also put a link for the evaluation of uh, the presentations that you uh, heard today. And of course, we will meet you once again at the last Thursday of the next month on the 26th of May. And you can, uh, of course, apply as a listener or as a presenter if you feel that you would like to present your good uh, teaching digital practice. Okay, so thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you, everybody. Thank you. And bye. Bye bye to everyone. Bye bye. bye. Thank you.